we've been Dr. Caro has been managing her for for low um, kind of co-managing her with our primary vet. Okay. Um, yeah. For for pancytopenia, and we're trying to figure out what's the underlying reason for it. Yeah. And we've tested for a bunch of infections, and she's on antibiotics right now. Or like on, uh, I forget the term you used, but just like a predisposition. Had her for six years, and this is new within the last couple of weeks. Eating, drinking, pooping, peeing. Yeah. Okay. But seizures, pain, um, heart problems, balance disorders, things like that. Um, you know, her exam's so normal right now. It's hard for us to say, you know, what where it's coming from right um quite frankly hopefully it's completely unrelated to her her pancytopenia um you know so we should think about causes related to that and then just keep our mind open as, as, as they might be unrelated mm -hmm. so um it's not wrong for us to do an mri of of her head um I, I would probably also just take a quick peek at an mri of her neck um assuming that the MRI of the head doesn't show us anything. Um, we would most likely do something like a spinal fluid analysis. So sometimes things like infections can cause pancytopenia, but can also cause things like meningitis. Sometimes we can just have autoimmune disease. So the body's defenses start attacking um, our own bone marrow or the cells, not when they're in the bone marrow, but once they're out in circulation. Um, and it can also attack the nervous system so occasionally we'll see um, inflammatory disease affecting multiple systems in the body um, the way we would find that would be with a spinal tap um, I, I think it, even though she did have blood work done yesterday just we'll want to see what her platelets are yeah. like today yeah, just in case we're doing something like a spinal tap mm -hmm. um, I don't see any evidence of um, you know bleeding or anything like that on her gums or in her eyes or her ears or so I don't have a strong reason to worry about it, but yeah, you know. So it's not wrong, you know. Quite frankly, the best news at the end of it will be I don't see anything pro I don't see anything wrong in her brain. I don't see anything wrong in her neck. I don't see anything wrong in her spinal tap. That will be the best news that I can give you at the end of this testing. And at that point, we kind of you know focus on pain management and focus on um, you know her pancytopenia. But if there is something to be found, the best way to find it is with an MRI and spinal tap. So. Okay. Emma, <laughs> yeah, come on. There you go. Oh. This one. This is Emma. She's very, very nice. Um, she's going to get an MRI of her head and her neck. She's a catheter. She is being treated for pancytopenia. So anemia, low platelets, low um, white blood cells, so let's do a peripheral stick for her, for her blood, no drug sticks. We can even put a sign somewhere that says no drug sticks. So. Peripheral, peripheral catheter, MRI, brain, and C-spine. Sounds good. High fives. Oh, look at that. Alrighty, well, let us know. Um, just have them send us any records after you, you go to Doral, just so we, we have our records up to date. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, of course, you got it here. Bye-bye. Um, about a week ago, I started circling, um, bumping into things, getting stuck in corners, kind of standing between the fridge and that sort of thing. It doesn't seem, like he kind of yelped when we picked him up, so he was in left lateral recumbency when I walked into the room. Um, and Is he a little mix or a big mix? Small. I mean, small, not small like, enough. not like, but small feral hound size looking okay. dog. Um, they said yesterday he wasn't walking. When they saw him this morning, he, or he was walking. When they saw him this morning, he wasn't, and he was in lateral recumbency when I was in the room. But when you get him up, he walked across the room to mom. Okay. Um, so on his exam, like for his 
bad as he kind of sounds, his exam was relatively normal. Okay. Like his proprioception was normal. I couldn't get a source of pain. I feel like his neck hurts because he's tremoring. Um, but I couldn't get him to vocalize anywhere. His cranial alert nerve seemed normal. Um, like I said, he walked to mom once I stood him up. Um, she was holding up his head um, when he collapsed, but he stood there for a while. Um, and he does have, I asked her about, so he's, she said that he was attacked by the other dog. Um, and he has what looks to me like a puncture wound over his right temporal, or temporal lobe or bone. But she said it's been there for a while. Because I asked him, did you know if the other dog attacked him and then this started? But she doesn't seem to think that it's a coincidence. Um, so we talked about, you know, I'm I'm worried based on how he looks. I'm I'm worried about something going on in his brain, even though his exam is relatively um, not suggestive of that. But his history is she's got a couple of videos to show you. Okay. Um, Yesterday he was walking, but today he's kind of like this. If Dr. Adams says if we get him up, he'll he'll walk a little bit, but he just prefers to lay like this. Yeah. Okay. Doing to you, bud. Huh? Okay. So, I mean, you know, I, I obviously don't know him at all, but you know, what his normal personality is, but I mean, he's obviously very dull and distant to me. You know, I mean, when I walk in the room, most dogs will, you know, come greet me at the door or, you know, at least recognize my, my presence, you know, even if they're, even if they don't want to be friendly, that they still say, hey, new person yeah, just walked no, in. You know, this just, is not him at all. Exactly. So, you know, um, so the, you know, the main symptoms that, that he's showing and the things that you're showing in the video are behavior changes. You know, he's not acting like himself. He's kind of wandering kind of aimlessly throughout the house. I guess I didn't appreciate walking compulsively in circles to the left, but, you know, just kind of walking aimlessly, getting stuck between, you know, the dryer and some other appliance. I don't remember which one it was, but um, getting stuck there. Um, and then just in the video where his head kind of does that and you know, he, he did it here as well, where his head sort of tremors. Um, those are also um, all things that suggest a problem in uh, the, the balance system, the back part of the brain. Um, so so level of consciousness is kind of the back part of the brain. I guess also some things are in the front part of the brain. Um, th th this head tremor um, suggests a problem in the back part of the brain. So. Um, I'm very comfortable in saying that, you know, he has an abnormal neurological problem affecting his brain. The challenge is saying, what is the cause? So we can say where it is, we just can't say what it is just by looking at him. And that's typically where tests come in for us to say what it is. And I know Dr. Adams talked to you a little bit about, you know, the tests that we would propose, mainly an MRI and a spinal tap and just the anesthesia and the cost associated with that. So my understanding is we're not going to be able to, to pursue those tests right now, and that's fine. Um, so from there, without being able to do tests, the, the second thing that we'll do is kind of make a list of the possible causes and kind of say, well, if it's you know this one, if it's a brain tumor, how do we treat that? And if it's inflammation, how do we treat that? And if it's an infection, how do we treat that? Um, certain things are treatable, certain things are not treatable, um, and we're making a list of the things that are treatable and kind of trying to give you medications to treat each one of those. All righty, well give us a few minutes. We're gonna get just the antibiotics together. We're not gonna get the antibiotics and the steroids because if he's doing well a week from now, we're just gonna continue the antibiotics. I wouldn't want to charge you for something if you end up not using it. And if you need it in a week, then we can just call it in for you. Thank you so much. Got it. All right, dude, let's get up. <laughs> yeah. uh, you look like a dog that I could just spoon with on the couch. Oh, <laughs> definitely. Stay there all day, that. huh? I've taken multiple naps with him. <laughs> right, Bob? Yeah, I'm chill. And see, that's another thing. His personality lends itself to being very low-key and, you know, he's not... Kids love him. He's really good with them. You're like a big wolf to hang out yeah, with, huh? Yeah, he is. Pet wolf. Let's go. Go on, let me see how you get up. And at home, what we do is we have like
it's always the hadn't even touched yet. Always the area where he's very. Yeah. It's okay, Bobble. I mean, for what's worth, I don't think he looks drastically worse. Yes, he he's scuffing his legs more. That back left leg, when you flip it over, it stays there. And when he walks, sometimes he flips it over on its own. Um, option one is we do an MRI. The anesthesia, the costs associated with it, as you know. Um, the second option is that we treat him with some rest for a little bit and add in additional pain medications just to see does it help with regards to his back. He has a degree of arthritis, um, just, you know, that's par for the course for any older large breed dog. And then I, I agree, I think physical therapy would absolutely be a benefit to him for a couple of reasons. Just one, you know, I mean, he, he's the dog that physical therapy is made for, you know, kind of a chronic non-surgical spinal problem, chronic arthritic things. and. Needs to be on a diet, so. Oh no, um, he is on a diet. So, he's uh, definitely fat. Yeah. I know. So, so, so di <laughs> diet and exercise. So, um, so a little bit of physical therapy would actually help with that as well. So, I, I, I think he is a dog that would definitely benefit from rehab. I'm sure Dr. Block just wanted me to, you know, before starting on a rehab course, just yeah. make sure that I was in the loop. So. Um, he also talked about steroids. What do you think about that? Is that something you would advise or no? So. Uh, not yet, um, and it, it's for a couple of reasons. One, steroids sometimes can just mask an underlying problem. Um, the, the biggest reason is, is Johnny Walker's already a huge dog. Um, it makes him gain weight. Makes them eat more, makes them drink more, makes them pee more, makes, okay. um, makes them gain weight, um, and you know, just long term, it can make the muscles weaker and the joints weaker and things like that. So, um, I, I, I guess I would first like to try adding in another pain medication in addition to the Galapran, and then starting some sort of rehab, um, assessing how things are going. Then, well, and then the third reason is we don't like to switch from carprofen to Galapran to prednisone. Um, that's a recipe for stomach and or kidney you know, upset. So, okay. um, so I think we should first do that plan, you know, plan A as we'll call it now, of adding in a pain medication, resting him for a couple weeks, starting back with, with rehab in a couple weeks after he's had a rest period, okay. um, start off with gentle physical activity, and if that's going really, really well, um, you know, we'll continue with it. If it's not going well or if they're kind of good days, bad days, at that point, we can have the discussion of decreasing and then stopping the Galapran, having him some time off of the Galapran, and then switching to prednisone if we need to. Um, but that will be kind of a, a distant plan. Um, no, I'll stop you. Last time she was able to walk, this time she's unable to walk. There's maybe a little bit of movement in the one side, the other side's just dragging behind. But when I pinch on her toes, she can't feel them. So she's certainly worse. Um, it, we, we don't know what the cause is. So that's where the MRI makes sense this time around. You know, So last time we tried medications, right. hoping that it was a slip disc, hoping that it would get better. Um, but since it's not getting better, since it's getting worse, since we don't know if it's a slip disc or not, that's where the MRI comes in. Hopefully we find a slip disc, because if it is, we've got 95% chances of fixing this. Whereas if it's not a slipped disc, we still need to know what the cause is so that we can treat it appropriately and give her the best chances of getting better. So, um, so option one, as, as Dr. Adams has talked with you about, is that we do an MRI today. Um, and if it's a slip disc, we do surgery. Assuming it's a slip disc and we're doing surgery, she'll probably stay here for four or five days after surgery just for pain medications, nursing care. Um, she probably won't be walking by the time she leaves here in four or five days. She might be, um, but every dog's different. Some dogs get up and walk the next day. Some dogs take you know several weeks. 
most dogs take a week or two. Um, ones that are in her category right now, assuming it's a slipped disc. Um, if it's not a slipped disc, it's something that we would call you today with the results, and you know we'd have you come in and we'd go over the results, what they are, and what it means, and what our our treatment plan is. So, uh, coffee. And then, coffee sounds perfect. She does that. I'm looking for because yeah, Ross Meister sent his list. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope you found something of value. Uh, if you did, feel free to give us a comment, give us a like, share it with someone that you think might get something out of it.